assalamu alaikum we know when the electric current flows through a conductor it behaves as a magnet by producing magnetic field around it we also know that when a current carrying conductor placed in magnetic field experiences a force in this video we will obtain the expression for force between two long parallel current carrying conductors so that i considered this as a conductor through which a current i1 flow i named this conductor as v i take one more conductor which is named as b through which current i2 flow here these two conductors are separated by a distance of r and they are of a infinite length here current carrying conductor a and b both are of infinite length but to get the expression of force i consider or i take only a small portion of these two conductors whose length is l okay i'll go ahead now as i told you earlier when the current flows the conductor will produce magnetic field and the direction of magnetic field around the current carrying conductor can be easily given with the help of right hand thumb rule what does it say let me explain you if i have a conductor for example here i have an aluminum rod if a current flows from bottom towards the top then it will produce magnetic field around it to get the, the direction of magnetic field I place my right hand in this way with the thumb stretched upward then i hold this uh, conductor in my right hand for that i need to curl the remaining fingers now i do it once again see i move my remaining fingers in this direction to hold the current carrying conductor then the thumb will provide me the direction of current in the conductor and the direction in which i curl these fingers provide me the direction of magnetic field around the conductor clear so if i apply the same here then i place the right hand here thumb gives the direction of flow of current now i curl the remaining fingers it gives me the direction of magnetic field so the magnetic field acts this way around the current carrying conductor turn to right hand thumb rule the direction is given in this way this is the direction of magnetic field now if you look at the, this part you find that this current carrying conductor now has come within the magnetic field produced by this uh, conductor v which carries current i1 i name this magnetic field produced by the conductor v which carries current i1 as b1 vector okay now here in this part this magnetic field is found to be acting in a particular direction so can be obtained if you draw a tangent to this now this tangent provides me the direction of magnetic field v1 here in this region okay so what i need to do i continue the direction this way and i draw the tangent if i draw the tangent i can also take a the arrow mark here in the reverse uh, direction but uh, that will not uh, provide me the correct uh, direction of our field 
Why the error mark is taken here? The reason is if I continue this line, then this error mark will reach in the in this direction. So it is done so. This clearly shows that the nodic field acts inward. Acts inwards, acts inward and perpendicular to the plane of boom. Okay. To identify in uh, to identify the direction, I draw the coordinate system. This x axis, this y axis, and the this z axis. This shows that the current I1 and I2 flows along the z axis, whereas the nodic field B acts inward. So here the x-axis is actually projecting outward. So the nodic field is just opposite to the x-axis. That means it is along minus x-axis. It is along minus the x-axis. Clear? That is why it acts inward. Here, I cap is the unit vector taken along x axis and the j cap is the unit vector taken along y axis. In a similar way, k cap is the unit vector taken along z axis. It is known to us, but I am going to use here. Now I will write the expression for a nodic field experienced by this current carrying conductor. Uh, before going ahead, I do certain uh, changes to this. To make my work easy, I take a small portion of this conductor. So the length is dl. So the length is dl, and it represents the elemental length. Okay, through which current I two is flowing. Now, if it is so, this current carrying conductor. Will experience the force as it carry current and plays the nodic field. So the force experienced by this current carrying conductor will act in a particular direction. So that direction can be obtained with the help of Fleming's left hand rule. What does the Fleming's left hand rule say? To stretch three fingers of your left hand in such a way that these three fingers are mutually perpendicular to each other. Then the fourth finger represents the direction of nodic field, middle finger represents the direction of current flowing in the conductor, and the thumb represents the direction of force experienced by the current carrying conductor placed in nodic field. Clear? Now I apply that one here. Here, the current acts upward, uh, moves in the upper direction in the conductor, and the nodic field acts inward, shown by this uh, four finger. Then the thumb represents the direction of force experienced by this current carrying element, whose length is taken as dl. Correct? So, the force acts in this direction. In this direction, I name this one as F. It acts in this direction. Here. Now, first, I will write the expression for V1, the magnetic field experienced by the straight current carrying conductor. What is that? We know the magnetic field experienced by a straight current carrying conductor is represented by mu naught i upon 2 pi r. This is represented as mu naught i upon 2 pi r. Here i is the current through the conductor. In our case, the current through the conductor A is nothing but I1. Hmm? Now I am going to provide the direction. Here the magnetic field acts along the x-axis, along minus x-axis. So, the unit vector used here is minus i cap. 
I name this as equation number one. Equation number one. Then I'll obtain the expression for force experienced by this current element dl. You know the expression of non-clonic force that I'm going to use here. The d of t r is equal to i d l with t r. Here current is flowing through the conductor B is i2. So i2 d l with t r multiplied with magnetic field is b1 with t r. This is the force experienced by the current element. I D L with that. Clear. I take this as equation number two. Now I'm going to substitute the one in a two. Equation one is substituted in two. What I'll get to do is that is D F Z star is equal to I two D L. Then the plus of B one. I write this. U naught. I one upon two pi r. Okay. And what is the remaining here? Okay. Now I'll provide the direction. Here, the force acts along the. Uh, I'm sorry. Here yeah, the current. The current flows along. The Z axis. So the cap is taken here, and the magnetic field acts along the x axis. That's the mention here. It's minus i cap. Minus i. This is the summation here. I write this within the whole bracket. The square bracket. Now, what is it? If you uh, multiply k cap with the i cap, what you obtain is nothing but this j cap. So this uh, minus n is written on the side. D F theta minus the sine is brought on the side, and the remaining thing is written this way. I two D L mu naught i one on two pi r and here when k cap is multiplied with i cap I get j cap. This gives the direction of force. Now I rearrange this equation. But then so it applies some more. D F theta r is equal to minus mu naught i1 i2 dl upon 2 pi r j cap right then i take this as equation number 3 this was equation number 3 i am going to write the expression for magnetic field produced by the current carrying conductor E. So I'm going to follow the same method. Magnetic field produced by this current carrying conductor is taken as B2. So B2 is star mu naught in place of I1, I take I2. Because the current I2 flows through the current carrying conductor B. I2 upon 2 pi R. Here, in what direction this uh, magnetic field will act? For that, I use right hand thumb rule. So I place it. Uh, I place my right hand in this way with the thumb stretched upward. Now I move the remaining fingers in this direction. It provides the direction. In which the magnetic field act. Okay. So this shows that 
नॉर्थ फील्ड प्रोड्यूस्ड अगर तो मैं लेट मी ड्रॉ दिस वन किया इज द कंडक्टर डी फ्लो व्हिच करंट आई टू इज द फ्लो इट प्रोड्यूसेस नॉर्थ फील्ड this manner now here marathi uh, sorry the conductor g is placed here separate by distance r and i will mention the direction of marathi field here yeah, this marathi field produced by this current carrying conductor b is the name as b2 vector no i know thumb rule the direction of our field around the axis in the direction what but if so if i draw a tangent here near this conductor It will provide me the magnetic the direction the direction of magnetic field near conductor Y. So according to this here uh, marks, the tangent will have here mark acting this direction. This uh, clearly shows that the magnetic field B two acts uh, outward. It acts uh, outward. perpendicular to the plane of the board right this is what it should so i proceed to mm. so this way the direction is represented by The unit vector that is I cap, which acts along the x-axis. Right? This is the second equation number four. Second equation number four. Then afterwards, I take a small portion in this uh, current carrying conductor. Y. Now here current flowing is I one. I name uh, this portion as D. Carrying element, fine. Right. What is so? The force experienced by this current element is taken as D F theta. Now, as you did earlier, at this time, the current flowing through this conductor is taken as I one. We follow the same method. Now, wherever one comes, we are right. Two, wherever two is there, we write two. So here two replaces with one, and it is uh, this conductor is placed in the magnetic field B two. So B one is replaced with B two with that. This takes us to question number five. Now I substitute four in five, four in five. We form the same method. So B F with that. What do we? I two, I one, D L. Here, mu naught, I two upon two pi R. Then, the direction is in a total of the area. Here, we have in a total, I cap. And here it is acts at the yeah e yeah here so no? what is the cap this gives the direction of current in a uh, this conductor what is the this gives the direction of current I two flowing in the conductor B. Clear. So 
when you multiply k cap with the i cap you get the j cap this time of plus j cap okay now d vector will be written as but this time i rearrange it u not i1 i2 on 2 pi r then here d a written here and what comes next the unit will have this j cap this is taken as equation number 6 for by convenience fine now I am going to integrate the equation number 3 and the equation number 4. To get the, the total force acting on the current carrying conductor. Now, I told you earlier, in our case, though the conductors are of infinite length, but uh, we take only a small portion of the conductor whose length is uh, taken as n. So, I am going to find out the force acting per unit length of the conductor. So that I integrate equation 3. Why I do so? You will have to know that once I do it. So integrate the vector. If you do so, what I get? I get a F vector or integrating you get F vector. This side minus u naught i1 i2 upon 2 pi r. These terms, whatever I have written here is constant. We do not integrate a constant. So the integral term is taken outside and we can only integrate this. This makes j cap. Mentioned here. Alright. Now, on integration, dF, we know if you integrate integral of dx is equal to dx. In the similar way, if you integrate dF vector, what you will get is nothing but dF vector. Okay. This is what I do. Now, what I have is this dF vector is equal to u naught i1 i2 upon 2 pi r. If I integrate that dl, what do I obtain? It's nothing but l. And here we have a unit of as j cap. Fine, this is a, the force experienced by a conductor B when placed in magnetic field B1. Alright. Okay, so this can be written in a, the manner of this one is written as F yeah, equals to mu naught I1 A2 upon 2 pi r then the force per unit length is obtained as mu naught I1 I2 upon Pi r. This is the force acting per unit length of the conductor. Hmm? What I have left here, we forgot to mention minus a, minus a, and the minus a will come here as well. This clearly shows that the force acts towards the conductor E. Now, it will in which direction the force experienced by the conductor E will act. For that again I use Fleming's left hand rule. See how I place the fingers. I told you the molecule acts outward. So, the three fingers are placed in this manner. Four fingers gives the direction of the molecule which acts outward. No? Uh, okay, so I'm sorry. This manner. Here, first finger goes the direction of magnetic field, and the finger 
this is the middle field, this is the direction of water current and uh, the thumb gives the direction of uh, force. Fine. Right? So this is a little difficult to hold this. And this man. Uh, man okay. Not a field, this is a force, direction of force, and this gives the direction of a current. So from Fleming's left hand rule, the force here acts in this direction towards the, the conductor B. Right? So I follow the same method. Whatever I have done here, I do the same thing to equation number six. I integrate this. If I integrate. Integrating equation number six. What I'll get? I'll get this. If I integrate, I'll get a F delta. Then DL will become L. So Q naught I one I two upon two pi R L. Then G cap. If I take the magnitude, then the magnitude of this force is a minus mu naught i one i two upon two pi r. Okay, and it is written here. Now see, this force acts just opposite to this force. Here we have minus sign. Here we do not have minus sign. This shows that. These two forces are acting just opposite to each other. They are this way. So the force experienced by conductor A acts in this direction, and the force experienced by conductor B acts in this direction. This is shown here. They act opposite to each other. Force. Now write the expression for force experienced by Unit the length of the, uh, the conductor that is f upon l is equal to mu naught i1 i2 upon 2 pi r. Here we have plus sign. Okay, I'll box this. So, here from this, we have understood that whenever a current carrying conductor is placed in the magnetic field, it experiences a force. And uh, the direction of force experienced by a current carrying conductor placed in the magnetic field is uh, obtained with the help of Fleming's left hand uh, rule. And uh, the right hand thumb rule is used to find the direction of magnetic field in a conductor carrying a current. Now, when uh, two conductors are placed in such a way that they are parallel to each other and carry current in the same direction, then the force between them is something but attractive in nature. Hmm? So there will be an attractive force between them. Next thing I would like to tell you, what will happen when the conductors are carrying current opposite to each other? If we have two conductors, the conductor A carries current I1 in the upper direction and conductor B carries current in the downward direction. In such case, the force that present between them will be a repulsive force. When the current flows in the same direction, the force is attractive. When the current flows in the opposite direction, the force is a repulsive in nature. Got it? I hope uh, the video is useful. If you have any kind of doubt related to the topic, tell me put a question in the comment section. Thanks for watching.